Hoffman, you are an interventional radiologist here at Stanford with a fascinating career as an expert in DVTs, blood clots, um, and then really quite a clinical leader working on making expert um, medical care more accessible uh, as a co-founder of Grand Rounds. So can you tell us a little bit more about um, how your work as a specialist uh, really was core and informed the mission of Grand Rounds? Sure. Um, so I'm an interventional radiologist and my specialty is opening up veins that have been blocked for 15 to 20 years. Um, when I started doing this about uh, 15 years ago, there was only about three to five of us on the planet that did it. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't really well known. And patients would find me on the internet and then want me to see whether they should fly to see, see me at Stanford. Mm -hmm. And vividly remember a woman in, in Australia that said she was going to mortgage her home to come see me at Stanford. And I said, well, before you do that, send me your records and your imaging and I'll take a look. So I looked at it and said, oh, she, needs, she doesn't need my hands for this case. It's a pretty straightforward case. Any good interventional radiologist could do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, found her a good interventional radiologist in Australia where she was treated and cured. And so there's really no mechanism of really helping patients find the right doctor at the right time for the right care. And so that was kind of the initial idea with Grand Rounds of helping patients you know, do that at the expert level. As the, as the company's grown and involved, you know, the company's now over 500 people. We take care of almost 5 million covered lives. But we are really now the front door to healthcare for any question, whether it's my breast cancer therapy or it's my Lipitor dosage, you know, is this correct? What should I do with it? And then even things as mundane as what's my copay for a specialist versus a primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. And when we think about connecting those patients in maybe under-resourced environments to specialists, um, is there work being done at Grand Rounds to also um, increase the speed at which some evidence-based guidelines are actually implemented in, in the specialty context? It's a great, great, great question. So the, the data is a publication that came out on the East Coast about 15 years ago that shows from when something gets published the clinical trial gets published that this therapy is better than the old therapy. It takes 17 years for it to disseminate across the country and become widely adopted. Mm -hmm. So with Grand Rounds, we can greatly accelerate that in, uh, uh, information dissemination uh, through patients pulling and asking for it, mm -hmm. as opposed to doctors kind of waiting for it to pop up on whatever CME activity uh, they're they're working on so that's one of the fundamental you know jobs that we do at Grand Rounds mm -hmm. for and it, it's it's amazing how some of the stuff that I did here at Stanford 13 years ago when I was starting here i had been doing it for a decade at Hopkins but it wasn't being done at a hospital that's three miles south of here mm -hmm. so patients three miles south would get treated for blood clots differently there than if they ended up at the Stanford emergency room mm -hmm. yeah. And what's I think also really fascinating is uh, people, especially here at the conference and in the broader community, are talking about, you know, patient engagement and consumer uh, consumerization of kind of digital health technologies. Um, but at Stanford and a lot of other um, larger academic centers and healthcare organizations, we still have a fairly low patient engagement rate with the patient portal systems that exist. Mm -hmm. So do you think some of these emerging technologies, whether it be Grand Rounds or other telehealth services, can really help to booster and facilitate patient engagement in, in that sense? For sure. It requires a dedicated team. So we saw this in the early days at Grand Rounds, that we really needed a, a customer engagement, you know, patient engagement team mm -hmm. that's really marketing the services of Grand Rounds to the patients that work at these different employers so that they're aware of how to get an expert opinion or how to find a mm -hmm. primary care doctor or how to how to reach you know grand round some some employers actually were the number on the back of their insurance card they call grand rounds not their insurance provider um, and so it's really an active amount of of work to educate the patient that there's a a different and a better way and an easier way and, and more cost-effective way to mm -hmm. get access. Mm -hmm. But what's even 
even more profound is I've always believed that an educated patient is a compliant patient, mm -hmm. and we do a terrible job educating our patients in, mm -hmm. in medicine. And so if you take a look at our expert opinion process where they go online, they tell us they have breast cancer, we get all their records, all their imaging, we package it up nicely, send it to Dr. Famous to review it, and then Dr. Famous writes it, a nice opinion right back to the patient, mm -hmm. includes the, the treating physician there locally. Um, and then for the patient to read, one of our staff physicians at Grand Rounds will go over that opinion with the patient to make sure they understood everything. Mm -hmm. We typically write it at an eighth grade level. And with that whole process, we have a major change in diagnosis or treatment 66% of the time. Hmm. These are, and that number is held up over the life of the company from our first 30 cases to I don't know many, how many thousands and thousands we've done now. But the other thing that's interesting is we're able to follow, did the patient do what we recommended? Mm -hmm. Because we ingest the claims data from the employer. And our adherence rate is 84%. Wow. The adherence rate of giving someone a prescription is 50%, mm -hmm. right? The primary care doctor says, go fill this. It's a 50%. So again, by, by putting it written and not oral, like mm -hmm. we currently do in clinic, mm -hmm. and having the time for a patient to digest it and then ask questions again to a, a physician really helps them understand and then engage and comply with the treatment recommendations. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And you were also uh, recently appointed as the leader uh, of the digital health care integration team here at Stanford yes. um, to focus on really integrating some of these uh, telehealth services into primary care and specialty care uh, clinics. So how have you found um, telehealth tools to really be able to align the incentives of kind of multiple stakeholders that, that we have to think about in these larger healthcare systems? So you hit on a key point about align, aligning incentives. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I started the company was I wanted to be able to align doctors, patients, and payers in one place in my own sandbox, mm -hmm. as opposed to the way everything is actually currently misaligned in America healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So um, here at Stanford, that's a journey, and we are working on how we can change uh, patients' expectations and their wants for in-person or digital interactions. Similar with a physician, you know, does a physician block off time to do these type of interactions? Do they do it interspersed through their day? How do you compensate a physician for this type of effort? Um, mm -hmm. So these are all discussions that we're having both in the, the digital healthcare integration team as well as with the broader leadership in the School of Medicine and Stanford Hospital on, on how to address. And the great thing about working at Stanford is people are, we can do things, not can't do people. So mm -hmm. the traction that we have and the momentum is actually pretty impressive. Right. And, and what are some threads or emerging trends in the telehealth space that you are particularly most excited and interested in? So, you know, the what's really interesting, I mean, it's like, Grand Rounds wasn't, I, invent, I didn't invent a new algorithm, I didn't cure cancer or anything, I just said, let's just get data, and put it on the internet and get it to someone fast, securely and get it back, like, mm -hmm. that's it. There's a lot of really non-sexy things that we need to do in, in healthcare, and so simple things are video visits where patients can, you know, for pre-op, instead of coming all the way down to the hospital, like, why do, why do we need to see you before you're gonna have surgery? Well, the big reason is we need to look in your mouth to see what your airway looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, now the patient takes their iPhone and goes, ah, and mm -hmm. our nurse practitioner can look at it and say, okay, we're good to go. And so, so it's something just literally as simple as that. The thing that we're working on that I'm really excited about is our e-consult process. And this is a mechanism to do provider to provider interactions asynchronously. Mm. The reason a lot of digital health stuff have not, has not taken, over, taken off in the past 25 years, I mean, video visits have been around, that capability has been around since the 90s. Mm -hmm. The problem is that required a synchronous interaction. And so instead of us being in the same place at the same time to, for me to see you in clinic, we're now just, you can be in a different place, but we still have to coordinate my schedule and your schedule to have this interaction. Mm -hmm. Grand Rounds was the first uh, healthcare provider to break that 
and do this asynchronous interaction to get expert opinions. Mm -hmm. So similarly here at Stanford, we're looking at taking e-consults where a provider, primary care doctor may say, what's the best anticoagulant to use for this patient? You know, they don't need to send them to me or a hematologist to do that. They just type me up like three lines on an email or in the portals that we're building now at SHC. I can respond in a, you know, in a nanosecond and tell them what to do. Tremendous value to the patient and the primary care doctor, to the health system overall. It also allows me to see more patients that need my hands on them than patients that just really need my brain. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this wonderful information about your work at Grand Rounds and also here at Stanford. We really appreciate your insights. Thank you for the time.